to know this, privatizing power is crazy. And you only need to look at what's going on in Japan right now to understand why. On Wednesday, Japanese regulators gave the privately owned Tokyo Electric Power Company, TEPCO, the go-ahead to begin taking over 1,300 fuel rods out of a damaged reactor unit at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. The reactor in question was reactor number four and was badly damaged in an earthquake in March of 2011. It's actually sinking into the ground right now. By removing the radioactive fuel rods, TEPCO is beginning to decommission reactor four, a process that could take decades. All of this is supposed to make everything safer at Fukushima, but many nuclear experts say that taking fuel rods out of the damaged reactor four could be even more dangerous than the leaks that have plagued that plant over the past few months. In a recent piece for Common Dreams, Harvey Wasserman warned that should the attempt fail, the rods could be exposed to air and catch fire, releasing horrific quantities of radiation into the atmosphere. The pool could come crashing to the ground, dumping the rods together in a pile that could fission and possibly explode. The resulting radioactive cloud would threaten the safety and health of all of us. If such a fire breaks out, radiation could continue to pump into our atmosphere for centuries. This kind of end of the world scenario has the Japanese and some of the media seriously thinking about changing who's in charge of the Fukushima power plant. Privately owned TEPCO has made some boneheaded mistakes over the past two years. Just a few weeks ago, for example, plant workers overfilled a storage tank, sending toxic radioactive water into the surrounding area. There's a very real risk that TEPCO could screw up the fuel rod removal as well. This should be a wake-up call to everyone here in the United States. The whole idea of privatizing power plants is crazy, especially when you're talking about privatizing nuclear power plants. Let me explain. Energy is a natural monopoly, and it's therefore an essential part of the commons. Just like you can only have one water line coming into your house, you can only have one power line coming into your house. That's a natural monopoly. And when one private company controls a resource like water or power, that company can charge whatever it wants for people to use that resource. And that's a pretty dangerous power for any private company that's only answerable to its shareholders and not to we the people to have. Remember, society doesn't just need power plants because they create power. Society needs power plants because electricity actually improves people's lives. It allows businesses to run, schools to stay open, the government to function, hospitals. Modern life would be impossible without it. With this in mind, the whole idea behind privatization of essential natural monopolies like this looks ridiculous. The role of power plants as part of the commons is to serve the community. The role of a private company like TEPCO, for example, is to make money. There's a fundamental contradiction here. Private com companies have a built-in incentive. It's called the profit motive, to charge as much as possible for providing a service that people need to survive. The profit motive also incentivizes private companies like TEPCO to cut corners and throw safety out the window all in the name of making a buck. But that's only half the issue. When we decide to make energy a public good, as opposed to something a company can make a profit off of, that changes the type of decisions we make about powering society. When we start to think of energy as something we use to improve people's lives, rather than just electricity, then it becomes obvious that something as dangerous and threatening to public health as nuclear power is just stupid. If we really want to make sure the kind of disaster that's going on in Japan right now never happens here in the U.S., and the best thing we can do is let local and state governments who are answerable to the local people rather than far off stockholders in New York City take over energy production. For more on this, actually for more on the, what's going on at Fukushima and the whole nuclear issue, I'm joined now by Paul Gunter, Director of Reactor Oversight Project at Beyond Nuclear. Hey, Paul. Hey, thank you, Tom. I don't want to drag you into a public-private discussion. That's uh, the political arena and more my thing, but uh, you're the expert on nuclear power. Radcast is reporting that we're seeing radiations levels spiking around the country. Just today, uh, they say 100 is the point at which you, they issue an alert. You freak out, or not freak out, but you, you can really seriously concern. Uh, Frederick, Wisconsin, 59 counts per minute, spiking at 74. Three different cities in Arizona, Chino uh, Valley, Prescott, Tucson, all averaging 60 counts per minute. 
Uh, East Coast has seen high levels today, 63 per minute in Charleston, North Carolina, 71 in Salisbury, Mass. And they issued a hot rain warning in Salisbury saying that, you know, the, the, the background count was 71, but if you went out into the rain, it was hitting 120. Um, is this the radiation from Fukushima starting to show up in the United States? Or? It, it's really hard to say. Uh, you know, we uh, fully support the idea of independent radiological monitoring, put, put radiation monitors into citizens' hands. And we're seeing this done across the United States uh, that's source-oriented on uh, nuclear power plants like Seabrook or Three Mile Island. But the, the RADCAST network, I think, is a very important uh, development that can bring early warning to uh, citizens here in the United States, potentially from uh, the uh, fallout from uh, Fukushima, but you know, I, I think that uh, the, the problem we, is we don't know. It could, we don't, have, we could have been some big power plant you, you in know, Nebraska. Just, just you've outlined a very big area. Yeah, yeah. Mm. If the Japanese, so let me just say, it's yeah. certainly suspect. Yeah. Okay. That's a re yeah, that's entirely reasonable, particularly since they are still dumping what right now. Uh, well, there certainly is uh, 400 uh, tons a day of radioactive water going into the ocean, but this plant very well is uh, off-gassing uh, radioactivity into the atmosphere as well and uh, uh, issuing steam. Uh, the, and the, the problem is, is that uh, we don't trust the monitoring that's going on in Japan. Yeah. Well, and, and, and also Fukushima is on the east coast and the prevailing winds are west to east so even the monitoring that's in japan might not be measuring what's heading our way it's, 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 it seems but anyhow uh, this fuel this fuel rod removal i i've read several pieces helen helen caldicott was fairly outspoken about this and while she's been talking about nuclear power for a long time um, she's not you know really a hair on fire person and she's and she and others are suggesting you heard my quote from harvey Wasman earlier that if they pull this thing off badly, it could be an order of magnitude worse than Chernobyl. Do I have that right? Um, there's a lot of radioactive material. There's 400 tons of high-level nuclear waste in that pool on, in the attic of, or what's left of the attic of Unit 4 at it's Fukushima Daiichi. Ten stories above ground. It's, uh, the, it's six, the bottom of the fuel pool is six stories, and the top is ten stories. So. You've got a, uh, uh, quite a bit of fuel sitting up in the upper portions of a reactor that's now, uh, a reactor building that's now open uh, to the atmosphere. And the crane for heavy movement of that material has uh, been, was destroyed in an explosion that left the building leaning. Uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company has been shoring up Unit 4. But, you know, our basic concern is, is that Tokyo Electric Power Company is now a symbol for corruption, uh, cronyism, uh, you know, misrepresentation. You know, you know they, they falsified reports. They just got busted for having the Japanese mafia supply them with workers. This is the same company that when they built Fukushima Daiichi, they leveled the construction site by, uh, they, they took the construction site down 80 feet. They literally removed the natural tsunami barrier that was there at the site in order to provide easier access, quicker access for machinery to build the Fukushima plant, as well as to cut costs for pumping cooling water. So this whole uh, Fukushima site was essentially leveling the natural uh, tsunami wall. And they did it on bogus predictions that the highest tsunami that would uh, be predicted there was for 10 feet. And you know, on March 11th, we saw a tsunami that was 45 to 50 feet. But you know, it was a construct that essentially um, set in motion uh, a, a history of falsification, including safety reports. This is the same company that also false, got caught falsifying uh, 200 different reports on cracked uh, reactor internals from 1977 to, or, or 1977 to 2002 um, that 
you know, were false reports to the government on, on conditions at this plant that risked public health and safety. And it was all part of a cover-up that they didn't want to shut those plants down to, uh, that would result in both a cut in production and added cost. So they, they chose to deliberately falsify reports uh, to the government in order to save money. Now they're the ones that are chiefly in charge of, of moving over 1,300 fuel rods, 400 tons of high-level nuclear waste in an unprecedented uh, action that could cascade into a, a much larger catastrophe, you know, reignite this whole scene uh, on a hemispheric scale. Paul Gunter, thanks so much for your Thank you so much. Appreciate the, no the great work you're doing indeed. A milestone is being reached in the recovery of Fukushima Daiichi. For the first time since the accident, spent fuel will be removed from the damaged building and stored in a safer, more secure way in these specially designed containers. Moving the spent fuel out of the damaged reactor building and into safe permanent storage lays the groundwork for moving forward with cleanup and remediation of the damaged building. Getting the damaged reactor building ready for this moment is the result of months of planning and the development of innovative solutions. Although Reactor 4 happened to have been shut down for inspection at the time of the earthquake and no fuel was in the reactor, spent fuel was being stored in pools designed for that purpose. When the reactor building exploded in the events following the Great East Japan earthquake and the tsunami that followed, Debris fell into those pools, and the instability of the building made removal of the fuel, ordinarily something that TEPCO has done safely and routinely more than 1,200 times, a challenge. First, we used more than 20 different kinds of specialized equipment to remove all kinds of debris. Some of the smaller pieces of debris will be removed along with the fuel. We also checked for corrosion that might have been caused by the seawater used to cool the reactor and our inspection showed that the material remained strong enough to be lifted out. We also developed and installed a unique protective cover for the building and stabilized the building to prevent any further damage to the fuel pool and also to protect the safety of the workers. The machinery used for the extraction has also been modified to meet this unique challenge. Fail-safe wiring and redundant braking systems are used, along with sensors to prevent weight overloads and excess stresses. And all the removal equipment has been made strong enough to withstand even the unlikely event of another earthquake as strong as the March 2011 quake. With all these precautions in place, we can move forward with removing the fuel. To remove it, a crane positions a grappling assembly carefully over the fuel and slowly lifts it out of the pool. Once the fuel has been lifted out, it is lowered into special casks. These casks will be sealed and moved to a safe and secure storage underwater location on the Fukushima NPS site. Storing it underwater shields any radiation from escaping and keeping it here on the site avoids any need to transport it on roads or railways. This transfer from one form of underwater storage to another will not lead to any radiation exposure to workers or anyone else. The movement of the fuel to permanent storage will enable us to move to the next phase of the cleanup and safe decommissioning of Reactor 4, a milestone in the process of recovery. It is the product of thousands of hours of hard work by our engineers and other TEPCO employees and is also the result of the cooperation of international experts from all over the world. We are grateful to all of them. As the cleanup and remediation moves forward, we remain committed to sharing information like this video with you. For more information, please visit www.tepco.co.jp.